Move over traditional lenses, there's a new lens material in town. Hello, I'm Justine Murphy and this is Light Matters for June 27th, 2016. Thanks for joining us. In an exclusive interview with Photonics Media, renowned scientist Federico Capasso shares his research findings that a new metasurface lens material could ultimately replace traditional optics in microscopes and cameras and even smartphones. The new lens is easily manufactured and able to produce great images, he says, and could change the field of optics as we know it. Also on this month's show, we'll examine a new IR sensor that can get you into the inner workings of food, plants, medications, and more, and all without any physical contact. And I'll give you a lowdown on this year's Clio show. But before we get to all that, managing editor Michael Wheeler will lead us on a whirlwind tour of the photonics and optics hub that is Rochester, New York. Photonics Media hit the road in June with a visit to Rochester, New York center of the optics universe and home of the AIM Photonics Initiative. At Rochester Institute of Technology's sprawling modern campus, we learned about the recently announced Future Photon Initiative, a collaborative effort with an external funding goal of $100 million over the next five years, organized around a set of seemingly unrelated questions. Are we alone in the universe? What is dark energy and dark matter? How does the human brain develop? Can we see through obstructions to ensure national security? Don Feiger holds the dual role of director of the Center for Detectors and is the new director of the Future Photon Initiative. He told Photonics Media that RIT researchers from across the university's colleges and research centers are exploring how photonics can solve some of the world's most pressing problems. Feiger facilitated a campus tour that included visits with Drew Maywar, Associate Professor of Electrical, Computer, and Telecommunications Engineering Technology, whose lab is helping pioneer breakthroughs in fiber technology. Stefan Preble, Director of RIT's Integrated Photonics Group. Preble's group is integrating photons onto microchips, which will address computing, communication, and sensing challenges of the future. Parjan Mohansens, an Assistant Professor who is leading breakthroughs in novel materials such as graphene, and exploring new methodologies in the development of nanowires. Zoran Minkoff, professor of astronomy, whose work involves exploring the use of quantum dots on detectors and breakthroughs in terahertz imaging. Later, at the Strasenberg Planetarium, Tom Batley of the New York Photonics Cluster updated the group on recent progress of the AIM Photonics Initiative, which launched last July. Internet traffic is set to more than triple by the close of the decade, he told the group, and integrated photonics will be the enabling technology behind it. Our Rochester tour also took us to SEMROC. SEMROC was founded on a critical breakthrough in ion beam sputtering technology that allowed the use of hard dielectric coatings on a single glass substrate. Since then, SEMROC, now a division of IDEX Health and Science, has sold more than half a million thin film interference filters and is one of the leaders in optical filters for biotechnology. A few miles down the road, we visited Sidor Optics, a leading manufacturer of precision flat optics. Its 40,000 square foot fabrication facility is where custom wafers, mirrors, wedges, light pipes, and beam splitters are created from custom glass and crystal substrates for uses in aerospace, biotechnology, and entertainment. Our thanks to everyone who helped organize and present these wonderful opportunities. That brings us to a question. Where might we go next on our travels? Feel free to offer us your suggestions via our Facebook page or Twitter. There's a new IR optical sensor in town, and there's already a backlog of people waiting to get their hands on it. What began as a Kickstarter campaign, the SIO, developed by Israel-based startup Consumer Physics, is an IR optical sensor that allows the average consumer to instantly and affordably analyze physical materials, learn how many calories and proteins are in a certain food, what a drink's alcohol content is, whether a plant is healthy, or what exactly is in a medication. SIO essentially scans the molecular fingerprint of an object, reading the chemical makeup of its materials. It's non-intrusive and requires no physical contact with the object being scanned. Specifically, it uses an internal IR light source that illuminates the material, and a spectrometer collects the light reflected from that material. 
After breaking down the light, the spectrometer can then detect the results of the interaction between illuminated light and the molecules in the object. Consumer physics engineers demonstrated the device during the Clio exhibition earlier this month in California. It's very simple to use, too. Just hold the device over the object, press the button once, and in real time the information appears in an accompanying smartphone app. All of the information collected is formulating a database of matter that engineers say has tremendous implications in anything from research to food service to medicine. And given its small size, it's only about three inches long and one and a half inches wide, the device can be mass produced at low cost. According to consumer physics, you don't have to be a scientist to use SIO, you just have to follow your curiosity. For more information, visit consumerphysics.com. Material science is taking a huge step forward with the potential to replace glass lenses with metasurface materials that are not only more practical to manufacture, but can also produce aberration-free, sub-wavelength resolution images. This planar metal lens material could ultimately replace traditional optics in smartphones, digital cameras, and microscopes, enabling further miniaturization of such devices. The work was performed in the lab of Harvard University physics and applied engineering professor Federico Capasso, whose other contributions to the field of photonics include the quantum cascade laser. In an exclusive interview with Photonics Media, Capasso offered many details about the work, including that the planar lenses are actually able to operate at visible wavelengths. In this metasurface lens, tiny towers of titanium dioxide are arranged in a specific pattern to focus light. Different patterns focus different colors of light. In a traditional microscope lens, the glass varies in thickness between the middle and edges. Inside the lens, the wavefront of light is shaped via different thicknesses of glass. This focuses the light at one specific point beyond the lens. In the metasurface lens, the transparent blocks also bend the light toward the focal point, matching what happens in the glass lens, but with much less material. The metal lens building blocks are about 600 nanometers in length and have achieved the same resolution and magnification as a traditional glass lens that is 5 to 6 centimeters long. According to Capasso, production of the planar lenses may become highly cost effective. They could also be fabricated in much the same way as integrated circuits and do not require the polishing or complicated post-processing steps that glass optics do. The Conference on Lasers and Electro-Optics, or CLEO, went off without a hitch earlier this month in sunny San Jose, California, and Photonics Media was there. A highlight of the week was the Technology Transfer Program. Photonics Media was proud once again to be the event's media sponsor. It gave startups the chance to hear from established companies such as KM Labs and learn some best practices for taking innovations from the lab to the marketplace. Another high point of the conference was the Women in Photonics and Optics panel discussion, which presented a forum for scientists in various career stages and expertise to discuss career paths, challenges, and experiences as photonics and optics professionals. A total of 4,600 people from around the world attended Clio 2016, according to OSA, in addition to 210 exhibitors and more than 2,100 presentations. And that's it for this month's show. Let us know what you think of Light Matters. Are there topics you'd like to see more of? Any industry sectors that could use more attention? Let us know your thoughts and send a note to lightmatters at photonics.com. And if you're not already, connect with us on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.